Hello there, and welcome back to Chiquita Nicole Speaks. My name is Chiquita Nicole Edwards, and this podcast is where... to discuss the fit life and I have a special guest with me today who believes that fitness can be a lot a lot of fun it can be exciting it can be exhilarating and all that great stuff so Miriam Jenkins has been a teacher for 32 years teaching health physical education and special education she taught in Oregon for 15 years and 2020 was her 17th year in Florida. She coached girls basketball in high school and college for over 20 years and is currently in her seventh year coaching boys weightlifting. Miriam has also been an athlete. In high school, she played basketball, ran track, cross country, gymnastics, softball, and volleyball. Talk about the all around athlete. (laughs) She also played college and semi-pro basketball. Miriam always wanted to be a bodybuilder, but wasn't committed to the diet when she was younger. But before turning 50, she committed to training hard and she entered in her first competition in 2015 and never looked back. She earned her pro card in 2018 and has competed in over 20 shows as an amateur and a professional. Paul Rivella is her team pro physique coach and we are now going to formally meet Miss Miriam. Hey, Miriam, how you doing? I'm doing great, Chiquita. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. This is going to be a blast. Yes, thank you so much for coming. I truly appreciate that. So you have done so, so much. And I must say that for 50 years old, homegirl, you look fantabulous. You hear me? I want to be like thank you when I grow up. <laughs> huh? Thank you, thank you. I love to say it because I work with kids and they make me laugh every single day. That's good. And you know, laughter is good for the soul and it keeps you youthful. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So where did you find your passion in teaching? I know that you um, have so many different realms of education from physical education, special education, athletics. Like, where did that passion come from? You know, um, I think it started my, I want to say my junior year in high school. Um, I was actually studying to be in uh, business marketing and business management, Um, but that was my field in college my my first year, and then I switched. After that, I've not looked back, but my PE teacher said, hey, I've got something to do. I want you to stretch the class, and then I guess I must have did a good enough job because he gave me the job the rest of the year. Okay. Good job. Yeah, I didn't think much about it until... I got to college and I went, man, business management, business marketing, this is not as much fun. Sitting at a desk all day, I'm not even moving. (laughs) And then that's when I switched. That's when I switched. And it's amazing you say that because when I first went to college right out of high school, that was my first um, major as well was business management. And I must say I was extremely bored. I was like, what is this? Like, there's no action involved, you know? So I can definitely relate to you on that. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, and I know you mentioned that fitness can be fun and it can be exciting. Like, what ways do you find joy in working out? You know, I, there's several things. I've met some really incredible people that enjoy fitness. And I think when you share common themes and common goals with people, you have a different, you look forward to being there. I mean, I train at 5 a.m. I see the same people every day. And just the energy and the motivation from those different people being there every day, it just can allows you to continue to be better. That's what right. I feel. And then once you see your results, you're like, wow, this is kind of fun. And then you want to, what else can I do? And then mm-hmm. make it even more fun. And I think that's part of it too. And then being a competitor, I, I, I also believe being a competitor, it puts you in a different state of mind. Right. You know, you have goals and dreams and you have an idea of where you want to go. And I think that makes it a little more challenging, which allows it to be more fun. 
Right. Now, I wouldn't be me if I didn't ask this question because I have a lot of um, clients who might be in that late 40s, early 50 range. And a lot of oftentimes I hear things like, you know, oh, I can't lose weight because I'm going through menopause or, you know, I'm having all these things like at your age, I'm sure you can attest to some of that. So but you look amazing. So what did you do and what pointers can you give? that can help these more seasoned, um, beautiful, wise women know that their age is not a determining factor of how fit they can be and, and the fact that they can actually reach their goals. I think the biggest thing is, you, first you gotta make a goal and make it, and then you have to commit to it. And then right. you tell somebody, I'm gonna commit to this. And when I don't commit to this, you can't be mad when they tell you, girl, you said you was gonna do that. And you can't be mad because you said, I'm gonna do this. And you gotta make your goal, goal short. And mm -hmm. then when you accomplish it, celebrate. Then right. the, there's always gonna be something that gets in the way. And then you have to be able to say, you know, I know there's a birthday party coming up, but this is my goal. I can still attend the birthday party. I can just eat differently. And right. I think picking one thing to um, work on at a time. Don't try to do a whole bunch of things. Just do one thing at a time, and then when you accomplish that, move to the next thing. Uh, and I always tell people, diet is the first thing. If you can choose one meal and then adjust that and leave everything the same, then maybe a month or two later, go to the next meal. Now I'm doing two meals, then three meals, because it's overwhelming if you try to do everything all at once. Exactly, and I definitely agree with that. I always tell people, that taking baby steps is where you're gonna get the most success. I always tell people you never wanna make a goal that you can't realistically commit to over a lot of time. So if you tell yourself, okay, I wanna lose 100 pounds. Well, you know you're not gonna lose 100 pounds in 30 days, so how about let's set a tangible goal, okay? So we know you can lose 10 pounds in 30 days, so let's lose those 10 pounds. Like you said, once you reach it, celebrate all right let's knock off another 10 pounds and just keep doing it that way because doing abrupt changes is, is a lot of times what i believe makes people backslide yes and make them think that they can't accomplish what they're set out to accomplish and they're already defeated because in their mind there's no possible way they can achieve it and they say age is a factor they say i mean i know you know josephina um yes Yes, Home girl Dr. Does, yes. She didn't start working out until she was in her late forties. Never worked out a day in her life. And look at how amazing she looks. And her what is she, 70 something? Yes. Homegirl look Yeah, amazing. Amazing. She looks better than some of the 20 year olds out here. So it's yes. like there's really no excuse for achieving what you want to achieve. It's all about setting your mind to it. And that's where it starts anyway, is in your mind, right? Right, right. And you also have to decide, is this something I really, really want? Right. Or am, what is my reason behind why I want it? You got to have a why. Mm -hmm. If there's no why you're doing something and you're just going, well, I just want to do it. No. Why do you want to do it? And so then you got to pick the reason why I'm doing I'm doing this because I want to be alive when my kids get, you know, 50, I, even if I'm 80 or 90. Or I want to be able to travel around the world without having, um, without carrying my medications. Or, you know, whatever that reason is, you got to have a why. Because mm -hmm. that's happened to a few of my friends. They've got um, high blood pressure or diabetes. And the doctor told them to lose 50 pounds. And then they called me and they said, well, how do I lose 50 pounds? I said, well, let's lose five first. Right. Right. And then we'll decide if you need to lose five more. Mm -hmm. And we've been slowly getting there, so it's been fun. It's been fun. Yeah. And, and um, I think, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, just helping people believe in themselves, I think. I think that's why I like education, because you have an opportunity to give kids a chance to believe in themselves. Yeah. You know, you can impact them sooner. Right. And later. It's hard to change an adult sometimes, but mm -hmm. you can make an impact on a kid and they can come back to you later and say, you know, thank you for that. And even if you're not purposely trying, you just want to be able to give them something that they can have forever. Right. I completely agree with that. And, you know, I value youth as well. And I think 
that it's better, like you said, to catch them in that mind development phase and yeah. stay life. Because if that's instilled in there, then it won't be so hard to get their minds to operate a certain way when they get older. Because a lot of the time, um, people, they want results instantly. Yeah. And what I try to let people know, like you said with your friends, they want to lose 50 pounds. I have to remind them, okay, you didn't snap your fingers and the 50 pounds showed up, right? No. So you cannot snap your fingers and the 50 pound disappears. And you also cannot close your eyes and squeeze them tight and wish that the 50 pounds will go away and open them and the 50 pounds are gone. It just doesn't work that way. So you have to put the work in, you have to be dedicated. And then again, you need to know why you're doing it. And it needs to be, I think, a priority because I, be I strongly believe that the body that God gave us is the only body we ever ever will have it's the one person that we have to live with no matter whether we want to or not yes. so why not take care of this temple you if you That's get if, if you get sick guess who living with that sick person me you. If, yeah. if i have a flu or a cold guess who's living with that flu or cold me if i have high blood pressure if i have diabetes if i'm dealing with all these things who has to deal with it? Me. Nobody else can't take that from me. So if I take the necessary steps mm -hmm. to prevent a lot of these illnesses that are preventable, because a lot of these diseases are lifestyle diseases. A lot of people don't want they to face are. that. Yes, they are. Right? So I really commend you. Like every, <laughs> every time you mention or post your age, I have to be like, what? I keep forgetting I keep forgetting this because it's just you know I'm I'm younger you know I'm about what 15 years younger than you maybe mm -hmm. so I look at it like this when I see the average 50 year old woman they have all the excuses in the world of why they can't do something and I think all an excuses is just a reason to talk us out of something that we need to do what you think yeah oh that's a good that's a good way to explain it mm -hmm. it really is because i feel like if you know you need to do something like i had someone tell me this um a few days ago they said i want to do the program but i don't want to do the program and i told them straight up i said well you don't want to do the program because guess yeah. what your mind is not there if you want to do it but you don't want to do it you don't want to do it correct because you can't tell me on the one hand you want it but then you don't want to put the work in to do it. And the, the reason they say, I want to do it, but I don't want to do it is because they want the results, but they don't so want to put the work the in work. to get the results. Exactly. Yeah. Well, exactly. I think for um, some people, what I've noticed too, um, just the last few years, is uh, people throw things at me or people who, like you and I, who constantly are exercising or working out or trying to stay in shape, to, to make us look like we're sh they're shaming us because they don't want you to see that they're struggling right and it's a big thing right now in the industry where there's um you know body shaming going on yes. and we don't really want to be doing that to people we want people to live their best life and if you're not if you're body shaming somebody then you are you are not living your best life mm -hmm. because like i tell my students if somebody is saying negative things about you, they're talking to themselves. Right. They're not talking to you. Mm -hmm. I said, so you can't go over there and punch them in the throat because you're mad because they said something. Because they're really not talking to you. They're talking to themselves. Right. It's something they're dealing with on the inside that's unresolved. Yes. Yes. Just like the people that call us skinny. The people that call us skinny are essentially insecure that they're overweight and to take the attention off of them they want us to feel abnormal like we're doing something wrong and i asked myself a while ago i was like why is it that health and fitness is abnormal why isn't it that eating at mcdonald's every day eating at taco bell every day and eating sweets and candy why isn't that abnormal why is it that the people who decide like you said to go to the gym and work out and and take pride in our health that's considered abnormal you're not you're not normal you're not a normal person i hear that all the time i'm sure you do yeah. too you, you're not awesome. normal. come over here with us normal people give us normal go, go eat something yeah what people say go and get something to eat right like, and every day 
Yeah. And I had to educate one of my friends because she was like, um, tell me what you eat. I want to know how you eat. And let me tell you, when I sent her the food that I eat, she was like, oh my gosh, you eat a lot. I said, exactly. And when people tell me you need to eat, I'm like, if you saw that I, the meal plan that I, that I take, I'm pretty sure I eat more than you do. And that's the, the issue with most people. I mean, my students, I talk about this every day. You are the most expensive vehicle you own. Amen. Can't go, can't drive to Miami from Orlando on a quarter tank of gas and expect right. to get there without a tow truck. It's not going to happen. That tow truck could be diabetes, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke. Um, you know, it could be any of those other diseases because you decided that you just wanted to have a quarter tank of gas. And now you're right. on the side. I road. love how you broke that down. Make it plain, girl. Make it plain. <laughs> Girl, with Girl, a you Bugatti over here. The, the expensive, yes. the, yep, the Lamborghini. And I, you know, I actually used to back in the day, and I haven't done it in a while, which is, I don't know why. I used to have the kids um, pick a vehicle and we would put it on the wall. And mm -hmm. then we would go running, which we do still do, and walking, and they would move their vehicles along the wall because the wall had the, um, the mileage on it. Mm -hmm. But I haven't done that in a I haven't done that in a long time. That's a good analogy though, but that is so true. This is the most expensive vehicle you will drive and you have to drive it every day. Every day. You got every get day. In it. You, you got to get up, you got to get moving. And for those of you who cannot move, that's a problem that needs fixing. Yes. Because if you're immobile, that's just it's it's not healthy. It says a lot about maybe what you're eating or not eating. Maybe the lack of mo uh, mobility you have, the lack of activity you're, you're being in. And you don't know how many people tell me, well, you know, I want to look good. I just don't want to exercise. I just don't want to work out. Well, the thing of it is there are so many different variations of workouts to be done. That oh, there's, there's so many. So there's, I'm, I'm not sitting here. A lot of people will look at me and they will, they will decide not to work with me because of how I look. They assume that I'm going to inflict my workout regimen on them. I and I'm like, the problem. yeah, I'm like, if, if you gave, if you came and did a consultation with me, you would learn that I tailor things to your specific needs and your specific goals and body type and fitness level. There is no way I'm going to take a beginner and have them do my workout uh, program that I do at five o'clock in the morning and expect them to be able to complete it. That's not how that works. Yeah. But a lot of people, they have this visual thing where, oh, I don't want to work with her because she might kill me. You don't know how many times I've heard that. I don't want her, you, yeah, you might kill me. I'm not, I'm not on your level yet. We don't want you on our level yet. We're trying Get to- on your you. own level. Right, you're on your own your level. Own and level. we're trying to help just make you better and healthier yeah. and teach you some things that maybe you didn't already know. Yes, yes. So, I mean, one thing that I can say, as horrible as this COVID-19 year has been, the one thing that I can say I've noticed is a lot more people getting out walking. Yes, and riding bikes. That's why you can't And buy riding bikes. And I, that is what more people need to be doing. Just get up and get moving. You don't have yeah. to lift a 100-pound dead um, dumbbell or a 100-pound barbell to be considered exercise, there are so many different things you can do. Correct. I mean, shoot, standing up and sitting down, that's an exercise, you know? Yes. You can work it. Good. And people don't realize like very basic uh, movements is needed for day-to-day -day life. Like exercising is a necessity. It's not a luxury. It's when you go to Publix and, and Whole Foods or wherever you shop at for food and you get your groceries, guess what you gotta do? pick those bags up, put them in the car, you turning, you doing all of these things. You gotta bend down to pick up pots and pans, reach up high to get seafoods, I mean seasonings for your food. All of these motions, if you don't move, those motions are, can become painful. Yes. And we don't want Very that. Very much so. <laughs> so Very tell us so. a little bit about 
tell us a little bit about your journey towards becoming a bodybuilder. I know you said that you wanted to be a bodybuilder, kind of like what we were talking about. You wanted to be a bodybuilder. I did. But, but you I, was not committed to the diet. So what was I, it? You know, was that light switch? I, I'm going to tell you what happened. When I was in my like mid-20s, I made the attempt to do bodybuilding. But the food, I, I had to eat tuna, egg whites, pickles. Um, exactly. I don't but like pickles. <laughs> I love pickles and I love tuna, but I don't. I couldn't eat it every single every day. Every single day, yes. As, asparagus, green beans, which I, I, I was on in a program that um, for a while that did that also, but I was in a different mindset. But back then I couldn't do it. Cause I just was like, oh, I want to have a cookie. I still think that way. People mm -hmm. are like, you don't, you don't eat sweets. I said, I am the sweet queen. They said, I, I mean, I, I had ten cookies with my students. I don't eat all of them. I split it with them because I know good and plenty well. I can number one, I can't eat ten cookies. Right. I, in my head, I probably could, but in reality, no. Right. So I just didn't have the commitment to myself. I would work out, I would train, and I still trained. I played professional basketball. Didn't matter. I just, I just couldn't stick to that body bodybuilder diet. Right, um, right. But um, I saw. I went to a, a show, uh, and I saw one of my friends that was on. I'm in Black Girls Run, and she was on the stage. And I said, "Shoot, I look like that now. What? I wonder what would happen <laughs> if I actually ate better." Right. So I hired a coach and I decided to see. And I, I wasn't ready, but I started to win. And then you get that little high feeling. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. I hired a different coach that moved me a little further. And I accidentally went to the national show and I got know. second place. I was like, what? Ah. <laughs> what? This was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And I think what happened, I started to meet people and we started talking now i compete with one of my closest friends we this year we did three shows we're about to do another show together i earned my i missed my pro card three times mm -hmm. i think three or four times and then when i i knew the day that i got it i i, I knew you felt and, it in your spirit oh i felt it in my spirit you know like just like now i know i'm gonna win that baltimore pro show i, I yeah I, I just feel it, it. Mm -hmm. I can feel it. I, I mean, I've been grinding hard despite all the COVID. I've been really working hard, and I want to. I want to accomplish some things, mostly for my students and my coach. So, right. my why reasons are there? Mm -hmm. You know, of course, I want to win for myself, but I don't get anything out of it. Right. You know, there's some pro shows, there's money. The big, big pro shows, there's a lot of money. Some of them, there's none. It just depends. But I think my mind, once I saw that show, that's when the, my mind clicked. I'm right. Like, I look like that now. What would happen mm -hmm. if? Right. And I wanted to see. And then once I saw that I could change, and every time I saw that my body was different, it gave me another, let me try it again. Mm -hmm. Let me try it again. Because it's just like that little tiny goal. You see this, now you get a little bit more. Then a right. little bit more. And that's kind of what's happened. And I've met some incredible people. What yes, I mean, you do. You people, do. Man. And they're not just the people who compete. They're the coaches. They're people who watch. And then, you know, I've, I've become an Instagram crazy person. And so now I do fun stuff on Instagram that allows me to be silly. Mm -hmm. and so serious all the time which mm -hmm. makes me laugh, which makes me feel good. And so it's just kind of changed my attitude towards life. Well, that's awesome. I love that so, so much. And it's nothing like being able to be silly. I used to be the same way where like, I'm naturally a goofball and bubbly, but you know, I used to be really shy and I was afraid of judgment. Like if I really be who I am, like will people to gravitate towards it? And after a while, I just was like, you know what? I don't care, this is me. I'll get right on my camera. I'm sure you see my post. I'm, I'm dancing. I'm being goofy because that's me. I pride myself on being happy. And a lot of times that happiness is infectious and people, they feel it, you know? And you want, you know what else I wanted to say? 
going back to when you mentioned about how, you know, the cookies and how you share it with your um, classmates and how people will say, you're not going to eat that cookie. Girl, listen, you don't know how many times. I mean, have you ever felt yourself feeling some type of way about having your treat meal in front of someone who's not an athlete? Because one time I was having my treat and I decided that I was going to get a vegetarian um, sub from Charlie's. I don't really eat bread like that, but that's where I was. And I was like, well, I got that and I had a few fries. And one of my friends looked at me, she said, I don't know how, I don't know about how I feel watching you eat that. And I'm like, what do you mean? She was just like, because you're so health conscious and you're eating this, this veggie sub with all the, with bread. And I'm like, I can have it. I don't eat this all the time. And that's the misconception is that people think that because we're athletes or because we care about our health that we don't enjoy fun foods either i love ice cream you know i don't do mm-hmm. dairy ice cream but dairy does not agree with my body but i love Mine ice cream. neither <laughs> i love potato chips my favorite are the cape cod um the plain ones and you know that- what's weird? um i used to love potato chips and i used to eat them every day i don't eat them anymore i, I don't eat them every day right years Mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, I don't eat them at all. Pizza, I don't like anymore, and it's Not a trick because you, once you adjust your lifestyle, there are foods that you just don't eat the same. Now I do exactly. make my pizza, but it's not like the pizza that we would go get it. Like I don't know, Pizza Hut or whatnot. Oh yeah, I can't do pizza. those. But I do. Yeah. I I make my own pizza, and mm-hmm. it's much healthier, and I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. I don't have an issue with. Having a piece of pizza that's not Domino's or mm-hmm. Pizza Hut or mm-hmm. Hungry Howie's, mm-hmm. you know, it's just a more healthy version. Same thing with desserts. Now, I'm a big dessert person, and I will go to a restaurant just to have the dessert. Me too. Cheesecake Factory is one of them. I love yes. cheesecake. <laughs> you know, and because every once in a while, life is not stuck in a bubble. You gotta enjoy things right and now it's, all it's about just balance, balance. Oh, yes mm-hmm. balance balance yep. and i and i always tell people like if you exercise the 80 20 rule with proper diet and exercise you will go so far the problem yes. is and i know you can attest to this when you try when you ask people like how's your diet what do you eat what do they do They tell you all the good things they eat. Oh, well, I eat salads and um, I don't eat a whole lot of meat. And, um, you know, I do some fruit, but they what they're omitting is their true lifestyle of eating. Because I'm like, I'm pretty sure if you ate salad and fruit that you wouldn't need my help. And I think it's because they're probably self-conscious and they think you're going to judge them. But really and truly. I need to know the truth in order to help you. And what I tell them is if you eat 80% bad and then the 20% you're eating the salad and the fruit, what's going to show up? That 80%. But if you flip that, when you see me eating my sub or my cheesecake, that's my 20% because I'm not eating that all the time. Majority of the time I'm working out, I'm eating right Monday through Friday. Well, I I eat right every day because if I decide to have a treat, I have one treat on a Saturday or on a Friday and then I'm good. The rest of the day I'm eating the way I'm supposed to eat, right? Right. Not to say having a treat is, is bad, but it's all about balance like we mentioned before. And I just think it's important that we don't confuse the two. Like if you eat McDonald's every day and then one day of the week you eat salad, that McDonald's is going to kick your butt. But if you eat, and I'm not suggesting eat salads every day, please listeners. No, I'm not suggesting because that is not enough nutrients at all. But just Um, for, just for, right. Right. I I, kind of run from myself. I like food, you know, but I'd rather have food. Yeah, I'd rather have food, something that's going to hold me. But every once in a while, like if I go to a restaurant, it, like for me to eat a salad, it has to be like a gourmet, something I can't make at home salad. Like eat throwing lettuce and stuff together, like that's boring for me. Like if I go, it's a salad that they have at um, BJ's. It's an ahi tuna salad. Oh my gosh, that thing is so good. That is a salad I would eat. But don't give me no Caesar salad, chicken Caesar salad. Toss, don't give me that because that's I can make that at the house, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And that's that's a boring salad for me. So, all I'm saying is having a fit life, 
it like like Miriam said, it can be fun, it can be exciting, it can be whatever you make it, right? Uh, definitely. And then you just have to be willing to try new things. Mm -hmm. There's so, that I'm trying to teach my students that now. My actually all my boys. I made them do a cooking video, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny! They did it. They did it. It was so good. They made. Um, one of my kids made a protein mug cake. He did a horrible job, but it was really good. <laughs> I mean, the video itself was funny, but he did a horrible job. And then one of my kids made um, some empanadas, and I didn't even know he could do that. Oh, you know, so you, so you don't know what how, how what kind of talents people have. And then I'm a I like to watch cooking videos. Me but too. I'm not a good I'm not a good cook, but I like watching them. I love and I'm to eventually going to get better. I'm doing a little better, but I'm not, still not that good. I mean, I yeah, made I love donuts them. last week. You, I saw I them. They look donuts. good. Yes, they were so good. My students thought they were going to be bad, and they loved them. Woohoo! They looked they looked very delicious. Even they without good. putting the frost, well, the frosting was protein powder and um, a little bit of cream cheese, yes. factory cream cheese, mm -hmm. and, and that's it. That's it, nothing yeah. else. And then the, the donuts were made with protein and um, uh, yogurt. Wow. Great yogurt, it was so easy. And a little bit of um, sweetener. I mean, right. it, it took 12 minutes. Right, and it's, it was, I'm sure, a hundred times more healthy than Dunkin' Donuts donuts. <laughs> no, those are really good though. <laughs> they are good, I, I'm not taking that away because my favorite is the pumpkin spice, this pumpkin spice season. I'd be like, let me stay away because, whoo. But yeah, I love, I love donuts. But um, I think it's very, like for me, because I have to have a, I got, I was accustomed to you know, working out fasted no matter what I was doing, opposed, like, normally we do, like, fasted cardio, right? Because we're trying to burn fat. But when you, when you learn better, you do better. And I learned that in order to feed your muscles and grow your muscles, you need to have some type of food on your stomach. So I've been eating carbs before I hit the weights. And what I do is I make a big batch of protein um, muffins that I make from scratch. I love to cook. I, at one point I wanted to be a chef, but then I was like, do I really want to do this for like everybody? No, nah, I just do it for my family. So, but I love to cook. I love coming up with different recipes and ideas. Like I'm very creative in the kitchen, but I made these protein muffins and I put flax seed, chia seeds, oats. I smashed up a banana in there and a crust pork protein powder and then the protein peanut butter powder and, um, and egg whites blended that sucker up i made a whole batch uh -huh. i came home my boy was like mommy that's it smell good in here and they digging their hands up but that's what I, I made a big batch of because i figure that would be better for me to eat before workout versus eating like some toast or bread or something because i'm getting my protein i'm getting my carbs you know and i'm getting the good carbs because it has oats in it you know banana and all that and it's it's like a muffin about that size it's not too big you know sounds good it's delicious i tear them up and then i might get a little extra fancy and put the little white it's like the little round white chocolate chips i'll put one mm -hmm. in one in each one heaven heaven ah, that sounds good you might have to shoot me the recipe well i'm the yeah. crazy one i um i still train fasted um i just started eating a couple of rice cakes maybe about i want to say february of this year maybe january because okay. mm -hmm. uh, i do train fasted and uh, my two little rice cakes is 14 carbs and then i eat my biggest meal post-workout not my biggest meal but a bigger meal like my oatmeal mm -hmm. my egg whites my peanut mm -hmm. butter i eat that um post-workout and i don't even eat till nine o'clock um, just because I've just gotten used to it, mm -hmm. I, you know, I just I used to try to eat and I just couldn't do it because it's so early. It's, it's so early. I'm the same and way. Just, yeah, mm -hmm. and I just like, and it took me a long time to eat the the the, um, the rice cakes. Rice cakes. Now, thanks to COVID, I drink coffee, which I never used to do. But when I was sitting here on the computer with my students, I needed something to do, so I drank coffee. Now I drink mm -hmm. coffee. 
So anyway. Have you tried it in your protein shake? Oh man, I tried that one time and I said, this is my drink right here. Make well, some you know, I don't, um, I, ha I, I haven't done it yet because I only have so many carbs right now. Oh yeah, you're uh, in the yeah. depletion phase. Yeah, well, fine. Most of the, the year, most of the, since August, I've been fairly low carbs and unless I'm going into a show where I get more carbs and a protein shake is not uh, on the list of things I want to eat because it's not food. I'd rather eat chicken. I'd or, rather eat food too. Yeah, yeah, I'd rather eat food. Now if I'm, if I've got extra carbs and I have, I'm not, I don't have a show, then I will do protein powders and I will make mug cakes and ice cream and donuts and cookies and all that kind of stuff. But if I'm close to a show three, four weeks, I take the protein powder completely out. It yeah. doesn't, because I like to eliminate all the variables mm -hmm. to make sure there's no problems going in onto the stage. Right. And I will limit the, I will pretty much eat a consistent diet for two weeks. Like I'm on that now, right now I just have, which I don't even like fish, but I, I somehow eat tilapia still once <laughs> every two days. I know, yuck, I don't like it. Really <laughs> I good, cannot do I've it. I've learned. <laughs> I've just learned to like it a little bit, and I put certain seasonings on it, and I can't taste it, thank God. And then, <laughs> chicken. And then once I'm off prep and I'm in my off season, I actually don't eat chicken at all. I go straight to tofu yeah. and seitan, and um, I go that direction because I've tofu had it for so amazing. long mm -hmm. that I don't, I don't want it anymore. Right. So, you know, it almost I, makes you want to gag. You eat it so much. Yeah. And right. I think that's what made it easy for me to get rid of it out of my diet because yeah. I'm like, I just, I'm just sick of eating. And I've never really been a, a meat person to begin with. And it used to frustrate me because, you know, when they give you your pre show meal and they say, go have a burger and fries. And I'm like, but I don't want a burger and fries. Can I have something else? Because I don't, I do. I don't, you do? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I, mm, and I remember one of my coaches had me, he told me to get pancake, bacon, and eggs. I said, can I do anything but bacon? I said, cause I don't eat bacon. He was like, what about sausage? I don't eat sausage. He was yeah, like, I don't okay. eat sausage either. Mm -mm. He was like, I would just do the pancake and eggs. I was like, I will not, I don't eat pork. It's not And, the, re and the reason they do that, so there's a reason behind because of the fat it. oh i know the reason it, yeah you need the but fat to fill the muscle up yeah give me some other fat <laughs> yeah if you need eggs eggs yeah. are good they got that they got good fat you put, put the a yellow, yellow in there. Mm -hmm. but the, the hard part about some of that is if you haven't been eating it it could disturb your physique so you right. have to be really careful i the last two shows i've had a burger and fries and i don't even eat burgers and fries like ever, I don't eat them at all. But the last two shows I've had them and it's actually really filled me out really nicely. So if I get it this time, I may not cause I haven't dropped weight like I normally would. My yeah. body's fighting me right now. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so what pointers would you give for those ladies um, that I talked about earlier that might be dealing with, you know, the womanly part of life as they get older um, in conjunction with fitness, like what, what pointers would you give them? It, it's not going away. So using it as an excuse is not going to help because it's, not, you know, I have my students say that all the time, miss, it's that time of the month. Okay. It's going to be that time of the month, every month, every month, years. I don't, right. I don't know what, I, why are you, we even having this discussion? Mm-hmm. And people and I get shocked say, when I, yeah. Yeah. People I get people, shocked when I work out with, on my, when my cycle comes, I'm like, it's going to come every month. Just be mentally prepared for it. <laughs> it's going to happen. And if you don't feel good that day, then do it the next day. If nobody says you have to do it that day, you, right. can, you can change and do it a different day. But don't go and use it as your excuse for why you're not going to do it at all. Because mm -hmm. if you go, it might suck going. But once you get there and you come home, you'll be like, oh, I'm glad I did that. Cause no yep. one's ever said, oh, all my workouts suck. I'm, I wish I never did that. Nobody's ever said that. Right, but right. People sit on the couch and go, oh, man, I wish I was motivated to exercise. Now that happens all the time. Yeah, a lot. But yeah. You, you and also to, I've heard, hmm? You just have to know that you're always, there's always gonna be something. And if you keep putting it off, 
then you're just putting off healing yourself. Right. Very true. Very true. And you know, and I'm sure you've heard this too, um, regarding the cycles and everything. I've heard people say, I was doing so good. I mean, I was going to the gym every day and whatever, whatever. And then my cycle came and then I missed that whole week. And then I just fell off. All the time. So, so I'm like, um, you, you do know it comes every month, right? So just jump back on, you know, don't, and if don't you're a use good planner, your planner. And if you're a good planner <laughs> and you track it, then you know, okay, this is the week my cycle is going to come on or you're close. All right, this week, mm -hmm. I'm going to take my break week and then I'm going to work hard this week and the week after. Nobody says, you mm -hmm. know, you can't do that. Or if it's right. you have a three day cycle, just say on these three days, I'm going to rest and I'm going to go hard the three days before and the two days after. Nobody right. said that you had to do it. Oh, my cycle is on. I have to go. Gym. You can change no. your schedule. So there's no you can. using it as an excuse. It doesn't <clears throat> change that it's going to happen because it's going to happen. Right. So. That's just the way our bodies are made. It's just one of those things you can't get rid of. So, you know, you just got to learn to work around it. Even if even if you say, well, OK, I don't have the energy because every everyone's cycle affects them differently. And I also yes. think that your diet has a lot to do with how your cycle oh, affects you. Yes. Just said out yes. there. If yes. you eat dairy. Yes coming up that time you're not going to be comfortable i'm just saying and if you eat a whole bunch of junk you, you you're going to be extra fatigued so if you know that you're one that gets really fatigued during your cycle and you don't have the energy to lift weights and that's what you desire to do go for a walk you're still moving if yeah. you're one that cramps really bad during your cycle rest use hot compression pads whatever you got to do to feel better and then when you're not in that sick mode Go for a walk. I mean, it. Does, all of your exercise days don't have to be strenuous. No. Just get moving. I definitely agree. Definitely. Mm -hmm. agree. So, I just, I just think that's important. And what about the menopausal women? Uh, you, you know, we, I, we're still killing it. We're killing the game. Fifty-year-old women that are, we're killing the game. I just competed in, I competed in masters, 45 and above, and you have women in their 60s and 70s doing it. What's their excuse? They don't have one. There's, there is, it, it, there's nothing that can stop you. Yes, you're gonna have a harder time. It's gonna take a little bit longer, but it can all be done. It's a matter of you have patience, and because we're mature, we have a different style of patience. We are willing to wait for the muscle to come on. And we have that good, mature muscle, which we don't lose. If we get it, we don't lose it. Right, right. And, and I would much rather have that kind. And it's hard to get there because a lot of the women that are competing now are in their 20s and 30s, and they don't have mature muscle. They have muscle, but it's kind of soft. Mm -hmm. It's not mature. Women in the 40s and 50s, we have nice, good, mature muscle. And mm -hmm. we can make it happen. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of lifting. Yeah. And, and you know what? The food. Being what? On track with your food. Yes. That's always a must. And it was one thing that a, um, one of the NPC judges told me, and I didn't quite understand it until what you just said. He had asked me how old I was. And at the time, I think I was like 34, I think. And, um, and he was like, yep. He said, see, your muscle is, is you get into that maturity phase with your muscle. And I was confused because I was like, I thought you had the most, you know, in my mind, I was like, I thought you had the most muscle when you're younger. But he was like, no, your muscle is maturing. So you, you still in that maturing phase and you're, you're almost there. Like, just keep going. That muscle maturity is coming. And I was like, now that you explain what you explain, that makes a lot of sense because guess who is not going to stop lifting? And I always look at my seasoned sisters and be like, that's going to be me when I grow up because I'm going to let this muscle keep on maturing and y'all going to be like, how do you again? <laughs> exactly. We look, at, if you train and you lift and you eat, and the key, of course, is back to the protein and how much protein you're getting. Because if you're not, most women don't get enough protein and that's why they don't look as good um, physically, 
because we don't have enough protein. Um, mm -hmm. The RDA, the I don't even know what the term, the registered dietary, whatever they're called, the mm -hmm. RDA, the official mm -hmm. people tell us how we're supposed to eat. Um, they don't even recommend a daily allowance. There it yeah, is. that's what it is. Um, yep. I think it's like 60 grams. And I don't. I weigh 110 and I have 150 grams of protein every day. Exactly. And I have 140 grams of protein every day. So my thing is this, <laughs> and I hope I don't offend anyone when I say this, but the people who are coming up with these recommended daily allowances and these ways that we're supposed to eat and how body mass and body fat, like they're quick to tell us we're overweight because, because of our height. They don't even eat the way they're supposed to eat. And they don't even take care of themselves the way you know how many doctors and nurses I've seen who are overweight and out of shape and and smoking and, you're doing telling me what and you telling me what I'm supposed to eat yeah. like I had a doctor when I was younger tell me that I was underweight but proportionate for my size I was underweight for my age but proportionate for my size I'm like that doesn't even make sense like if it I'm proportionate for my size then I'm good I'm not underweight and those are the same people that if you have as a man a lot of muscle mass and but you're and short in stature you they'll go in there and tell you you're overweight because your body mass index right. is higher than i'm just like don't nobody listen i'm looking at how i feel how my clothes fit me that's what i'm paying attention to right because like, all of these numbers and rdas and stuff is lower than it, what it should be and that's why we have all these problems to begin with people yes. are confused and don't know what to follow that you're right you're right that's definitely the truth mm -hmm. and that's why i love doing stuff like this like the podcast and my webinars that i have once a month and just just trying to educate like you're an educator um by trade and by by nature because you love to educate and I always wanted to be a teacher. I couldn't pass the dang math part on the um the GL. What do you call the general knowledge test? Yeah, the math yeah. was just my weakness. I said, well, shoot, if I want to be a PE teacher, I gotta pass the math. If I want to be an English teacher, because I was trying to be an English teacher, and I gotta pass the math, like I, what? So I'm I never. I don't even know I'm how. I'm horrible, girl. I'm horrible. If I don't have a calculator nearby, don't ask me nothing to do off the top of my head, because I'm gonna look at you like you speak in Greek. I'm gonna be like, uh huh. <laughs> I said to my kids, multiply that by four. I don't know what the number is, but get your, get your phone out, and multiply it. Right. Yeah. And my son, I call him the human calculator because if I can't think, I'm like Isaiah, what's this plus this? He'll blurt it out like that. See, see, mom's nice. brain work like I that. Need something like that close by. Yes, I'm so happy my son got it because I'm like, woo. But you know, I said all that to say, if we pay attention too much to these numbers and these re recommended all this it's recommended it's not even it's not even legit like even when you get on the scale i try to tell people all the time stay off the dang old scale that thing will mess your head up well, it's messing with mine right now yeah so. because i mean and if i'm being honest it could easily mess with me because like i told you before we started i've never weighed 138 pounds outside of pregnancy and pregnancy don't count because you're supposed to gain weight yeah. so my normal weight range is between 125 127 at the most 130 i've never weighed 128 i got on the scale this morning and it went up to 139 and then dropped back to 138.8 i said what but guess what i'm not tripping because one i was a hundred and 180 pounds I think when I had when I gave birth to my youngest son yeah 180 pounds and then I started exercising as soon as I got cleared and I dropped down to 150 and 150 back then looks very different than what 150 will look like now with my muscle density yeah yeah so the majority of this weight that I'm carrying is from the dense muscle that I'm holding on to. It's not from the excess fat. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's all in where, because I always tell people. Recomposition. Yes, yes. And I tell people all the time, if you have a scale and one side of the scale has a hundred pounds of bricks, right? How many feathers? So the bricks is the, is the muscle. How many feathers, which represents the fat, would you need to equal that 150 or 100 pounds of bricks.
it's gonna be a lot more a lot more which means a hundred pounds of muscle is gonna look very different than a hundred pounds of muscle. Correct. Correct. So that's why I'm like, y'all need to leave that scale alone because I have some people like, I, I, I feel like I'm in a plateau, my scale ain't moving. Just because your scale isn't moving doesn't mean you're in a plateau. Let me s take a picture and let me compare it to your before picture. And yeah. when I send it to them, they're like, oh, I did lose. You're losing inches, baby. Yeah. It's just, it's, we just get caught up in a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it can be mind boggling. And unless you're in the sport of bodybuilding, I don't think it's necessary to focus that much on the number on the scale. Once you're healthy, if that's your ultimate goal, because if you're healthy, looking good is just a icing yeah. on the cake. It comes with it. Now the sport yeah. of bodybuilding is different because you have a lot of factors you need to come into play. You got to look a certain way. Your water and all that needs to be a certain yeah, way. So much more, so much more. Yeah, but the fit life is very different than the bodybuilding life. Completely different. Right. So to, today we're trying to focus. Like we're giving you tidbits of how the bodybuilding life works, so that you can know that the fit life isn't meant to be the same way. No, because. Competing is 10 times harder than just being fit. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and being fit is good. Yeah. Being fit, you want to be fit. And fit is a broader view than being going on stage and with a bikini and being compared to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And it's a very subjective sport, too. So, yes. like, you may look better than you did two shows ago. And but you, you may look phenomenal, different. but if somebody can come up there and look better than you, and this is her first show, and she's going to win. And it doesn't mean that you didn't work hard. It doesn't mean that you didn't put all you're supposed to put into it. It just means that your competition, that your competition went ahead and did what it was supposed to do. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And they just, un they just unfortunately, you know, had to... They, they beat you because they look better and it doesn't it, it's not to say that you know any one way is wrong or beat yourself up you just you just gotta go back to the drawing board and do more mm -hmm. and that's where we are now we got we're at the drawing board we got a week we got a week oh a week you're that close well yeah october 31st oh you on halloween okay mm -hmm. all right well, this was so much fun, and I know one thing: you are gonna kill that show. You are gonna kill it. Speaking it right into the universe, you know what I'm saying? Pick it up. Pick it out. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, um, I'm so glad again that you took the time out to come and talk to my listeners and viewers about the fit life and the life of a bodybuilder as well. And how, and just, you know, providing tips and stuff that they can use in their day-to-day -day lives. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, so and if you try are... To enjoy the, try to enjoy the, uh, the journey. Right. Enjoy the journey, because if you don't enjoy the journey, take pictures, create memories. If you're not doing that, you're missing the opportunity. Just right. trying to, oh, I got to lose weight because of this, this, and this. And you don't celebrate the little stuff, you're going to miss your opportunity to have a good time very true very true well um if you don't mind go ahead and tell us how we can follow you your youtube channel your social media tags whatever you want to put out there go ahead this is your time um on instagram it's miriam jenkins ifbb pro and uh, i do have a youtube channel and it is the same thing miriam jenkins ifbb pro so follow me on instagram and you can see all the crazy stuff i like to do not just with my students but with my um bodybuilding lifestyle and my fit lifestyle woohoo sounds great well thank you so so much once again and until next time chiquita nicole speaks is ta-ta for now <laughs>